Go ahead. Uh, can you give us any update on the president's search for a Supreme Court nominee? Uh, he mentioned he's going to be having in-person meetings here at the White House. Mm -hmm. Is that something that might begin this week? Uh, yes, I can give you an update. Um, so um, as you have heard um, the president uh, say, uh, he is uh, he will do his duty to select a, ju a justice not only with the Senate's consent, but with its advice. As somebody who served on the Senate uh, Judiciary Committee and was chair, both as chair and ranking member, he is steeped in this process and looks forward to advice from members of both parties on the Hill, as well as top legal experts and scholars across the country, working with the Vice President and his team at the White House. And I think you will see those consultations start this week. So tomorrow the President is going to host Chairman Durbin and ranking member Grassley at the White House to consult with them and hear their advice about this vacancy. Uh, Chairman Durbin has worked on seven Supreme Court uh, confirmation processes. Uh, the President has also worked for many years with Senator Grassley and respects his knowledge uh, and views. So this will be part of that process and I expect we'll have more uh, details to confirm as the week proceeds. The President has said he's going to be you know, reaching across the aisle obviously as he makes this decision. Uh, we heard over the weekend Senator Lindsey Graham supporting his fellow South Carolinian uh, Judge J. Michelle Childs. Is, is bipartisan support a must-have for this President or uh, something that he would simply like to have? Well, I think, one, we appreciate Senator Graham's thoughts on the President is working hard to choose from a wealth of deeply qualified candidates who bring to bear the strongest records, credentials, and abilities that anyone could have for this role. Uh, I think as the President views it, uh, what's his, his objective and his intention is to choose from among a uh, a group of, uh, of black women with impeccable, uh, an impeccable record, uh, impeccable records and impeccable credential credentials. And he expects the Senate, Democrats and Republicans, to consider the qualifications uh, of these nominees and do that as it has been done historically uh, for many decades in the past. Um, so uh, we certainly expect, and he has every intention of nominating somebody who, with impeccable credentials, and certainly we expect and are hopeful that uh, Republicans will look seriously at whomever he nominates uh, and uh, at, at what they, who, who they are and what, what they would bring to the court. And just one more on this. Um, our latest poll shows that just over three quarters of Americans, 76 percent, want the president to consider all possible nominees, not only black women as he pledged on the campaign trail. Um, what do you make of this and, and why do you think that, that a majority of Americans want the president to, to take a different approach here? Well, again, what we can assure the American public of, um, whether wherever they fell on that poll, is that uh, he will choose uh, and nominate uh, someone who has impeccable credentials and is eminently qualified uh, to serve uh, as a Supreme Court justice uh, and someone who is uh, eminently qualified to serve in a lifetime appointment. Uh, he did make a promise uh, to the country. Uh, that's certainly how he sees it. And he is going to work hard on this choice, seeking advice and counsel from, as I noted earlier, a range of uh, leaders, of experts, um, and that's something that he is already pursuing uh, this week. I would note that there is a long history here. Um, President Reagan promised the country he would nominate the country's first woman to serve on the court, and he did so. Uh, former President Trump also promised to choose a woman ju uh, just over a year ago, and there was no such complaint uh, from the voices on the right who are speaking out now. Uh, but the President's commitment uh, is to uh, deliver on the promise he made to the country, but he has there's no question in his mind that there is a wealth of qualified, talented uh, black women to choose from in this uh, to, to nominate. Go ahead. Can you talk a little more about the size of the pool of candidates that the President will be considering? We've heard a lot about a few names that are currently federal judges the President had appointed, but then we've seen some expanding lists. Could you quantify that to any degree? And are all of these women being actively considered for the vacancy, or might it also include future federal positions that the President would also have the power to appoint? Well. Um, what I can, this may be unsatisfying, I will just preface for you, um, Kelly, which I hate to do, but, um, you know, as somebody who uh, appreciates the solemn importance of the responsibility he has, um, he's of course been reviewing a number of potential candidates. Um, uh, that is a list uh, that is bigger than a few uh, in the number of bios that he has been looking for, uh, looking at, um, and that have been prepared for him by his team uh, in order to be prepared if a vacancy occurred. Um, we don't think, and he, it is important to him to preserve um, the uh, details of the process 
uh, and his intention is to, as you know, uh, put forward a nominee next month. Uh, so this is not a month, many months long process. Uh, he is very focused on it and committed to it, but we're not going to get into details of names uh, uh, if we can avoid it um, or details of numbers at this point in time. Often for this kind of process, there is a team appointed to work short term inside yeah. the White House to be sort of a guide for that nominee. Mm -hmm. The term of art in Washington is Sherpa. Sherpa. Uh, have you made any progress on that? We've been making progress uh, and expect we'll have more uh, to announce for all of you hopefully soon. And last question, do you think bipartisanship, the chance to get Republican votes, would be a factor that would weigh heavily on the president among those he would consider? Uh, I think the president is going to select uh, the, a, a woman, a black woman, who is qualified, who is prepared, who has impeccable experience to serve on the court. Uh, he's going to do that based on uh, her credentials, of course, having a discussion with her, and not through gaming out the system. He believes that Democrats and Republicans should seriously and carefully consider uh, any qualified nominee he puts forward, as he has done in the past himself. Good.